All right, the red is coming. This is there, red card. All right, this is Charles Tyler here, the Charles Tyler Show, coming to you live and direct here, right down here in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, but I'm coming to you from um, Barajuca. Right to you, because we have the shopping village mall. The shopping village mall, and as you can see, it's a beautiful setting here. I mean, if you can turn the camera just a little too bad real quick, you can see the beautiful, these beautiful buildings right here, and a big, nice little river in the back of us right here, and all. Um, and like I said, I'm just going over here. I've been here now, what? 30 days? Thir over 30 days now, about 32 days now. And, um, you know, I'm just reflecting on life, you know, without being on the run waiting for and ready to chase down an airline, fly out of here. You know, and you know, trying to absorb into the expat life. And, you know, it, it, my experiences down here so far, you know, and all, uh, and I just have to say that I, I you know, a lot of y'all guys probably, you know, on my last um, live stream on Facebook, y'all, like, oh man, he lost a lot of weight. This is that. This is the lifestyle down here, man. You, you know, this is my, this is my soda right here. Okay, I don't drink soda. Um, you know, I'm always um, drinking water, and you know, life's elixir, definitely. All right, Charles, I got a few questions for you. Mm -hmm. um, question number one, what are some adjustments that you had to make in your first 30 days when you first landed in Rio as a full-time expat? Well, you know, for starters, you know I had to change my route. I was originally supposed to be in Fort Delaysia. Okay, so that was coming to Rio directly now and with the time, I don't have to be on the run all the time. You know, I'm taking my time, doing my videos, doing my work and everything like that. So, you know, I would say the adjustment for starters is that I'm not on the run as much, you know. You know, and then also, as far as health-wise, you know, we just had, we're just getting over the shock and the passing of uh, Mark Lyles. He was one of our members in our Facebook group and everything like that. And he passed away up in, um, you know, Salvador Bahia. You know, it. I've already had the idea of changing my the what I eat down. You know, Correct. but being here, it it's that much easier. All the junk food costs more, all right, and all the healthy food costs less. Exactly. I'm eating in small portions, but yet I'm still f feeling like I ate a whole day's worth meal, and I can, you know, and you know that right there has helped me healthy and also financially. I don't, I'm, no, I'm not blowing money, throwing money all over the place, you know. So, you know, I would say health-wise, it's definitely an adjustment. Financial-wise, it's been definitely an adjustment too as well. And the second question that I have for you is, um, what difference do you see in living in, living in Rio than living in America? Um, what are the, what are the um, things you miss as far as comfortness and non-comfortness? Alright, the funny thing about it is that some of the stuff I missed wasn't good for me in a way too as well. Like, for example, um, I have a car or a truck, okay? I can just jump in anywhere I want to go, I jump in a car, I'm there. Alright, well what's the, what does that do? That, that takes away the exercise, the extra exercise that I need, that I wasn't doing, is walking. You know, when I was a basketball player, I walked a lot, or ride, or I ride a bike. All right, when I was, you know, especially when I was in my teenage years and I had like a 40 inch vertical, why? Because I'm walking or riding a bike all the time. And then of course, 17 rolls around, dad throws me the keys to the car, and now I'm driving, and I've been driving ever since, okay? And in the process of that, weight came on, you know, I, when I tore my ACLs and I couldn't play basketball anymore, um, even more weight came on, but shucks, I got a car, I don't have to walk. Exactly. Okay, and, but in the process of that going on, I'm still putting on more weight, no exercise or anything like that. 
And these are basic exercises. These are not stuff that you have to go to the gym for. I'm walking so much that I'm just walking to the store or walking to the movies or something like that, or walking from uh, yeah, from from Lemmy all the way to Implemima Beach or LeBron, you know, I'm losing weight. And it's like it ain't no thing. I got the beach right there in front of me and everything like that. And I, I lost a lot of weight doing that. That's one thing. Yeah, and like I said, the other thing is access to more healthier food, like I said earlier. You know, I would say also having a lot of time for myself. Aside from me doing the work with the, you know, with, um, you know, with the black man's option, you know, I've had a lot of time to myself. I've been sleeping eight hours and all that stuff or more. And, you know, I just, the stress level, as you can see, I'm laid back here. And the I could see, level, I, could, I could tell the difference. I could tell the difference in, in your demeanor and in your, your actions, your attitude. I could see your stress level is not high at all. And because of that, I'm starting to see my youthness come back. Now I'm 44 years old. And I don't feel, mentally, I don't feel old. I don't feel middle age. But, you know, I'm starting to, you know, life abroad. I'm starting to see the stress level go down. That's why I see guys like Mr. John looking young as hell and they're in their 70s. Another question that comes always in mind that people always ask about you, they, one thing they want to know is like, what were the sacrifices that you had to make in order for you to actually reach to the point where you said, you know what, I'm going to move to Rio de Janeiro, I'm going to start up here. What little sacrifices you had to make? I don't call them little, but I call them huge because anytime you make a move, it's, it's still a huge sacrifice because you're leaving everything behind. Huge sacrifice I had to make was family. Because, um, of course, they don't want me to come down here. All right? And I wasn't happy where I was. You know, you, sometimes you can't live for family. And it's a hard decision because that's yes. your loved ones. Yes, of course. But you got to do things to make yourself happy. And your family, some, somewhere down the line, is they're going to come to see that. Like my number one critic of my weight is my mother, okay? Because she's always been a slim woman, okay? And it's kept her young. She's 77 years old. It's kept her young, you know? But she sees me down here and slimming down, then that's what she likes. Even though she wants me back in the States, but she knows that if I come back in the States, I'm a fat boy. And that's not good because I'll probably be dead before her. Exactly. Okay. You know. She cares about you. She cares she, for your own So she, interest. you know, she bears, bears and granted, and she lets, it, she lets me go. My father, on the other hand, he's starting to come around. Because he was against, ironically, by virtue of the fact that his, his new wife is foreign he's been with her for over 24 years now all right and you know he's starting to see well shucks he's going down there and he's starting to look good and he's happy and so he's coming around you know but being away from family then there's also my kids too my, my, my kids they're all over the world themselves my daughter's over in Japan you know my son he you know he'll eventually come down or some one day you know so it's mainly to me, family is the one is the one thing that you know that I had to make a sacrifice on. You know, of course, make sacrifices on you know um, having a car and all this other stuff. And, you know, and there's certain things you have to let go to make your moves to make you much more put yourself in a situation to where you want to be happy. And um, and one question, and you know, and so another thing is that I um that I wanted to ask you is, what doubts did you have when you decided to say, um, making this permanent move? Did you have any doubts? Did you have any concerns? Any worries? Did you have it? Like, what type of what would you experience? And what feelings did you have in mind when you knew, okay, the day is here, this is it, I'm gone tomorrow? I had, a, you know what, coming down the stretch of me getting ready to move down here last month right it was a lot of things going wrong okay like I said earlier you know I was supposed to go to, to Fort Deleza I was supposed to get married 
none of those things happened, all right? And that happened like days before so I'm supposed to come down here. Most guys would have like, oh, forget it, I'm not coming down here. But I look at it, I took it on as a challenge because I say maybe, you know, the creator has always create a path for you. And if he does not mean you to go down that path, you're not going down that path. Exactly. So maybe he's still guiding me. Okay, now I can turn away from the guidance and say, forget it, I ain't coming down here. You know, I'm not going to take a ch I'm just going to, just, you know, heck with it. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to continue on. And I say, you know what? I'm going to take this on as a challenge. All right, I'm going to build up my channel. All right, because now I know guys are looking at me. And, you know, a lot of guys, they look up to me, you know, being, you know, a future expat, you know, hopefully I get up there with you. But, um, you know, they want to see how I do so they can possibly do the same. You know, they can replicate the same things possibly. Not, maybe not exactly, but this guy didn't back off. This guy came down here. He made it happen anyway. All right. Exactly. You know, his, his original plans didn't work out, you know, but he did not let that stop him. He kept on going. Exactly. You know, so I, I would say, you know, I took it on as a challenge. What advice would you give any any brothers that, that have idea of moving, whether it's in Brazil or moving to any other country, what advice would you give them? If they have any doubts or if they are unsure, what, what, what would be the best advice you would give them? And like as far as preparation and, and you know and, and planning ahead, what things would you give? Well, them? you gotta plan ahead. You gotta, you know, you gotta get your money right and everything like that. And you got to, um, you know, you gotta believe that it's gonna happen. All right. You gotta take a chance. Now I can come down here and maybe things don't work out and I have to come back home or something like that for a while. Right, but that's not a failure. Okay, you know you learn some things and you're gonna come back. You know, all right. Brazil is a big country. It's the size of the United States, if not bigger. All right, and I see myself all over this country, not just Rio. Okay, Rio's just a starting ground. All right, and. My thing is like this, in order for me to, to um, explore this country, right, is you gotta have, you gotta have heart, you gotta step up. You can't let, you, you can't doubt yourself, right? You cannot doubt yourself. You gotta say, you know, for these guys who are looking in, looking in this camera, looking on YouTube, looking on Facebook, and looking at me, you know, they're looking at guys like Raphael, or guys like Alan Harper, you know, well, of course, the legendary Mr. John, you know, Dwayne Banks, Philly, Dr. Neil, Dr. 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 Neil Turner, all these guys who are expats in Brazil, all right, you know, Philly McFly Harris too, all right, these guys they went after it and they did it. They they yeah. In my case, this was a five-year plan, and I finally decided I'm not going to let nothing hold me back, and I'm, I just left everything behind. I gave my car back broke lease with my apartment back home in West Philadelphia and I just left. And I said I'm going to do this and if rain or shine, sink or swim, success or failure, I'm going to do this. All right? You got to have determination. You got to make it happen. Okay? So, you know, these are things that um, brought me to this point and I hope I, you know, like I said, I'm 32 days in. I hope I can go on, I, and then I'm taking it one day at a time as well. That's the way to take it. You know. And um, what are what are your future plans in general as far as for your YouTube channel, um, as far as your future travels within Brazil? What do you have in mind? What places do you have in mind to visit when you decide to travel outside of Rio? And what is the what is going to be the main purpose and key of, of your travels throughout Brazil? Okay. Well, for starters, my main purpose is to show the, is to show the brothers back in the Matrix that the world is way bigger than the United States. You know, it's funny. Um, I was watching a documentary yesterday. It was called Philly Uncut, right? And it was showing a rapper. Oh God, 
what was his name? I actually thought he was an actor, but he turns out he's a Philly rapper. Um, Gorilla, Gorilla, you know, I forgot, whatever his name is. Anyway, he comes into Philly. And he said, he goes to South Philadelphia. And he said, oh, I had to go with my hood dudes, all my criminals. And the guy was up there, you know, praising the fact they got shot. And they still living. Okay. You know, oh, this one dude, he a real, he a real, um, real street warrior. Man, he got shot in the head. And he's still walking around. Guy walks in there with his eye cocked up and all this other stuff. And I'm like, these guys are celebrating negativity. They're celebrating hood shit because three blocks is their world. One guy even said that we could be born with, the funny thing about born with dudes in the hood is that that same dude may live in your neighborhood about maybe three blocks from you. Y'all could be going to the same cleaners. Y'all show up at the same cleaners together. Y'all got to pull out guns on each other. And I'm like, for real? Really? This is how far the black community has fallen. And the reason why is that a lot of brothers think that their world is three blocks long. Okay? Think that the hood is where they're supposed to be at. Okay? And I frown on that. Okay? When you got a passport, the world is yours. Exactly. All right? The United States is a tiny, <coughs> tiny, tiny little world. Your neighborhood is just that more microscopic. Exactly. All right? When you go out there in the world and you see things, you see beautiful places like, look at that, the mountain, the mountains and all that stuff, and beautiful, um, like I said in the, about this, uh, about Barajuka, the jungle, the metropolis in the jungle, you know, and all this. When you see stuff like this, it broadens your mind. It opens your mind up even more. It lets you know that you don't have to be a hood nigga. You don't have to be all that stupid stuff. Exactly. All right? Because to me, it's stupid. Exactly. It's frivolous. It's dumb. It's pointless. You know? And, all, and you, when you start to become worldly, knowing extra languages and everything like that, and yes, my Portuguese is not that good. All right? But I'm learning every day. All right? I'm a slow learner when it comes down to learning a different language. And here's a question that comes to mind. Of course, this is what <laughs> gets the majority of the guys to come to Brazil. The woman, what advice do you, would you give a guy that's looking for a relationship here in Brazil or is looking for a marriage? What advice would you give them as far as to get a head start? Well, you ain't going to find a wife going to maps. Start us. All right, I will say that. It's like this, man. What mindset do you want them to bring over here when they come here to Rio? If they're looking for a wife, or girlfriend just to start, what would you advise them to do? Like, what would you tell them? All right, well, for starters, the number one thing is um, be open-minded, all right? Because you never know where you're gonna find love, okay? I said about maps and all that stuff, but you never know where you're gonna find love, all right? Of course, the language is also very important, all right? You know, and then you come here and you don't have to act like a hood. I'm you know, going back to the hood thing. You don't need that stuff. All right? You come here and you act like a gentleman. Okay? You know, you take a woman out to dinner. You treat One thing about Brazilian women is that it doesn't take much. You take them out to dinner. All right? You treat them with high class. See, down here is the machismo attitude as far as the men. I mean, I've seen dudes come from the hip, smack the shit out their women right there you know, at all. These women, they've gone through some, you know, abusive relationships and stuff like that, but these, these women are not like the Matrix women, okay? You come down here, you treat them right, you know, treat them with kindness, treat them like a gentleman, and you know, you will get far with that, okay? This, the women down here, I said it before, it's 26 to one for an American, okay? Especially when you get the language. The language, I think, when you get the language down, I think your numbers blow up even more. Okay. All right. But um, 
when you get that down and you come down here with a positive attitude, you come down here not with, okay, she might say no to you, okay, she's just like the Matrix women at home and da 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 you know. No. The one thing about it is, yeah, she may not like you for whatever reason. Okay, she may like a certain type of guy and you may not fit that bill. But the beautiful part about Brazil is that there's so many other women that will like you. So she may reject you for whatever reason. You may be too short, you may be too tall, you may be too big, you may be too fat, this and that. Alright? But there are other women out here who will like you for what you are. And you don't have to play no role like we do back in the Matrix. Okay? Just come down here as you are. One other thing, the most important thing, hygiene. Okay? You smell good, you wash up, you cologne, they love women, they love men who wear cologne. Alright? I mean, I get so much play with my um, polo or my um, cool water, you know, you know, and when you make it, you know, come down there and make yourself look good, some nice outfits, doesn't, you know, you don't have to be completely dressed down. I seen one guy who, you know, you uh, put a post up in Facebook looking like Mr. T with all this gold on. All that stuff isn't necessary. No. Exactly. A nice polo shirt, all right, some good cologne, you're well shaven, you know, you're well, you know, your hygiene down, everything like that. In other words, she don't smell you coming, okay? All right, at least smell, don't smell you coming in the wrong way. Then you can get a lot of play, all right, <coughs> and everything like that. All right, um, and now the other question that people ask in November, as far as a beach party, mm -hmm. um, what are, what are your expectations for the beach party? And when you first um, created the beach party, what was the purpose of the beach party? Well, the, the, the purpose of the beach party in the beginning, all right, um, of course, Mr. John, and, you know, he's the part, my partner with these and all that stuff, is to show brothers, you know, what life the average brother from the United States is like at a beach party, at a setting where we're mixing with the Brazilian women and everything like that. And then the most important thing, the, com the brotherly camaraderie that we don't get back in the U.S., all right? Brothers don't look out for each other in the U.S. like we look out for each other down here. And that's what I noticed when I first came down here, that we look out for each other a whole lot better. So I wanted to create a network of brothers from all over the country, all right? east to west, north to south, all right? you know, that you know, we can get together every November, and we hope to do it more than just November. All right, and we could build business relationships, friendships, okay, and all that stuff. All right, and then also guys coming down here, and who's to say? I remember a guy who came down here for my beach party in 2014. By 2015, he met us, uh, he came down for my next beach party in 2015, and he met us with his future wife. And they've been married, um, they got married uh, earlier this year, as a matter of fact. And, you know, these, I'm creating chances. I'm creating reasons to come down here. The beach party is one of them. To where the guys, well, man, I'm coming down here by myself. No, you won't be by yourself. Okay, it's going to be a crew of dudes right here and everything like that that you know from the Facebook group. You get to finally meet them in person and everything like that and all. But in the process of all that happening, you just might meet your Mrs. Wright. Okay. And the beach party is an excuse to get you down here to see what it's like down here. Okay? Camaraderie, a chance to see a beautiful city, and then maybe somewhere down the line, you might meet a woman that might change your life. And it isn't going to be a Matrix chick, an AAW or anything like that. Alright? That could bring you down the aisle. Um, I'm a man that believes in marriage. Okay? You know? And all, cause I, like I said, I had a father, he was married to my mother, all right, didn't work out, moved on, he married another woman, all right, and he's, as far as I'm concerned, both my mother and his current wife is the reason why he's still around now, exactly. you know. What advice would you give brothers that are dealing in, are dealing with, you know, that are in a bad relationship in the States, 
where the, you know that, that they don't know how to get out of the situation and they might have an idea in mind where they want to come down to Brazil or any other destination. What advice would you give them if you if they say that they feel like doing something crazy or or, if, or so? What advice would you give them if they're going through a huge depression because of their Take relationship? Take a chance and do it. Travel. Come on down here. See what life is like in real in Brazil or in the Colombia or even. I wouldn't feel shaky on the DR, all right, or over in Thailand or something like that. See what life is like before you, because like I said, the Matrix, Matrix USA is not the world, all right? The women in the U.S. are not the only women in the world. You see, that's where a lot of brothers make their mistakes at. All these dudes going out here, killing their women, you know, being thirsty, acting like a fool and all this other stuff. And they must, you know, I mean, come on, it isn't worth it. Going to jail, punching abroad. You got Tommy Sotomayor running up there telling dudes to punch women and black women in the face. You know, let me tell you something. Black women in the world, you just came from Bahia, the blackest city, in outside of Africa. Yes. All right, and you saw probably the, I seen the women that you were with over there. Beautiful women. And they treat you way different. So when you, if shit's not working for you in the U.S., sometimes it's good, if you up there not hitting home runs in the U.S., sometimes it's good to change the ballpark. Exactly. And I always say to myself, don't let other people influence your mindset where they tell you if you can't get any woman in the States, you're going to have a bad time overseas that's not true maybe it's not true some most of the time you have guys that they were married they was in a relationship that didn't work out and, now i will and, say this i will say this there's some certain things about yourself that you also have to make sure exactly you have to have confidence confidence yes. is the key you have to have confidence in yourself you have to develop that confidence you know how you develop that confidence you start going to places different places around the world it doesn't have to be home but just build your confidence I, little by little you built that confidence. I'll give you an example. There was a guy who, um, who was a buddy of mine, and he, um, not going to say his name, but he had a, going back to it, he had a, um, you know, um, he, not too tidy, okay? How can I say this? All right? It was not too tidy. You know, he had a hygiene issue. Mm -hmm. We smelled him coming. Mm. Good guy. Good guy. All right? And he couldn't figure out why he can't get a girl. All right? And, you know, so even down here, when he started coming down here, so we pulled him to the side and we came at him and we said, look, man, this is not, we're not trying to disrespect you or anything. But we can smell you coming. And if we can smell you coming, she can smell you coming. Yes. Okay. You got to do something about how you tidy yourself. All right. And how you keep your hygiene up. We should not smell you coming. If we do smell you coming, you better smell like polo. Exactly. You know. You know. As soon as he did that, trimmed himself down. You know. Got some decent clothes. Don't have to be the best. Don't have to be the best. A little polo shirt here and mm -hmm. there and all this other stuff. You know, he started doing those things. The women got past, he, you know, they, oh, he was a brand new person. Some of the women didn't even recognize him. Okay? You know, who's this? Uh, such and such, you know. Wind up getting himself a girl. There are certain things about yourself, too, that will chase women away. That is true. Okay? All right, whether up there in the U.S. or down here too as well. Exactly. All right, so you got to make sure you check yourself. Check exactly. things about yourself. The same thing with me. I did the same thing myself. Wait a minute. Let's let's make sure there's not nothing wrong with me too. Exactly. Okay. And there were some things about myself that I could fix up. Exactly. You know, my weight for starters. Okay. But um. Like I said, but, but when you do do all those things and they're still not working out, then yes, you have to change your ballpark. Exactly. You have to change the style of women. Women in America, they make fun 
of good dudes. Okay? You know, not saying all of them. Exactly. But I say that a, the large majority of them, I've seen p p posts on, there's a famous post on Facebook where a girl is taking a selfie with a dude, right? And she tells at the bottom of herself, she said, this dude traveled 1,700 miles thinking that he gonna get some pussy. And this is as close to the pussy he's gonna get. And she's making fun of him. And all the women are leaving their posters right there. Ah, you played him, ah. You know, you know, well, I, what I say to that dude, right? For the cost it took you to travel 1,700 miles, you could have traveled 6,000 more miles right south and got some play from a woman that would have appreciate you even coming from one part of the world to and another. And that guy could have been a guy that was a clean cop, the professional guy, was, guy great personality. Picture, I'm not judging yeah. men or anything like that, yeah. but the guy was, a, oh, he was an all right guy. Yeah. But he, it wasn't fair for the way, you know, Asian AAWs, AKA African American women, you know, was dealing the brother. They take fun in ignoring brothers. We are men. All right? It, and I, last I, think, I check, I love women and women alone. I think it's more of a stateside problem because, you know, the women in America, they know that they know their worth. They know that they outnumber guys in general. They know that they are more of a commodity there, you know? And I always say, if you're that guy that you're confident, um, you know, you dress well, you speak well, and you have a, and it's still not working for you in America, then maybe you should give yourself a chance to go abroad because if you're a clean cut guy, it'll work for you overseas if it's not working for you in the States. You know what I'm saying? So my, my thing is like, you know, some guys say, well, if, if you can't get a woman, I said, well, maybe that guy has tried his best. Maybe that guy is a clean cut brother, but he doesn't have that luck because the woman wanna, the women in the States wanna push him around. They wanna use him, abuse him. And some guys are not gonna tolerate that, you know. And I always say, tell brothers, look, when you come overseas, here, here are key things that you have to understand. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a wife, and you're looking for a serious relationship, especially here in Brazil and Rio, stay mm -hmm. away from horrors, prostitution, everything, because mm -hmm. you're not gonna find a great wife there. You should know your, your worth. That's why it's important to learn the language, yep. a little bit of the language, mm -hmm. you know, and seek outside of those areas where you're gonna see those type of women, mm -hmm. you know. Go where the, where you're gonna meet professional women, women that have this their shit together, so you don't have that headache. Lapa, and if bingo, and if she and if she tells Bajuka, and look yes. at the end of the day, when one woman says no, there's a thousand others that'll say yes. So you don't know, get one you. thing I will say about Brazilian women is when they do say no, it ain't over. She may say no, but I'm no, I got a boyfriend, whatever. Yeah. You know, but my cousin, my girlfriend. Well, who's your cousin and your girlfriend? Don't give up. You don't, don't. Oh my God, she's better looking than you. <laughs> you know, exactly. there you go. There's too many women in this world for you to, you know, because like, just like Charles said in his interview that, you know, you have girls that have different pre preference of looks. Some of them like the white guys, the Asian, black men, mm -hmm. fat, chubby, um, slim. You know, every woman has different tastes. Just like we got standards, they have standards too. Mm -hmm. So we can't let that affect because, oh my God, she don't like me. But the main thing is, and what yes. I tell a lot of brothers is that, Especially when they, they see on the videos and they see, oh, well, she's down here with a white guy and all this other stuff. The main reason why she's probably even with that white guy, and this is what's been told to me from Brazilian women, all right, black Afro-Brazilian women in particular, you know, what I mean is, is the fact that you're not down here. Okay? You know, African-American men, and more of them come to Brazil, they can get a lot of Afro-Brazilian women. There's an abundance of them all over this country, okay? And like I said, one may say no, but she might point you in the direction of one that might say yes, okay? There's a thousands, there's millions. Don't, don't, don't get upset because one of them said no. Just go on to the next one. Who cares? I, I'm at a stage now where I don't even, being down here, I don't even, I'm not thirsty. Okay, I'm not, you know, I can walk up to a woman, she can shoot me down. Okay, off to the next one. Okay, I don't feel the rejection anymore. Because I know there's so many women here that won't say no versus the ones that will say no. The, the, the odds are in my favor. And the thing about it is, that's 
when and that's not just in Brazil that's basically all over the world almost in most countries for the black man african-american man they're wanted okay don't let negative media make you out to be a thug or a criminal all right don't like for example because when you fall for it you wind up like that guy back there where his world is only three block three blocks long back there in west philadelphia and south philadelphia when i seen that documentary all right where their world they happy because they got shot i'm trying not to get shot because <laughs> shot getting shot don't feel too great and it might be the last feeling i ever get well charles in conclusion for your final thought you know on the final question of the interview anything else you have to say before we, we close down the interview well um like, as far as like what is your next move for the next 30 days and um well like i said you know what's going on here is i want to my main my main focus right now is my channel all right i have a lot of videos that i'm stacking up on right including the one we're doing today all right but with all this stuff going on with youtube YouTube censoring all our a lot of my stuff my they killed my monetizing rate and you know I'm not getting paid like I used to from YouTube okay the channel survives off the views on YouTube true but now the channel must survive off its subscribers as well all right because um, YouTube is censoring us so what I've done is um, I've opened up a Patreon account and y'all can see the Patreon link at the bottom that's gonna be a patreon.com slash I mean forward slash C Tyler show okay let me just repeat that again that's patriot that's patreon.com forward slash C Tyler show alright you're gonna find that in this in the subscription box right there um, we need a thousand patreons a month to keep our show going especially to do the things that the, do the things that I want to do with the show I want to bring y'all guys with me on my tour of this beautiful country Brazil all right I want to show y'all guys that there's the women out here are beautiful inside and out and maybe this is the type of expat lifestyle that you probably want to start with Brazil's my favorite you may like Thailand you may like Colombia but I want to at least on this tour of Brazil, where I go to, you know, Cabo Frio, Cabo Ganji, Salvador Bahia, Fortaleza, uh, Belo Horizonte, Sao Paulo, right back here to city side. All right. I want y'all guys to take a look and see with me. Go on this tour with me. All right. With my camera and everything. All right. But I also want to be held accountable by my work. All right, and when you guys come and y'all give your, yeah, like I said, uh, five dollars a month, okay, on Patreon, all right, it can make this all happen, and I can show y'all a whole new world. You know, a lot of guys say they want to support the Charles Tyler Show. Well, this is the best way to do it through Patreon right here. All right, you know, and like I said, we don't know how long this this YouTube crisis is going to go on, but it is what it is for now and you know right now the Charles Tyler show can use your support to keep things going all right and you can like I said you can support us once again the Charles Tyler show um, if you want to support us you can go to patreon.com forward slash C Tyler show okay all right and that will definitely keep us going I can bring y'all over the world and bring y'all the black man's option all over the place all right, Charles, man, it was good having you in this interview, and um, and I'm pretty sure you have more up to come. Mm -hmm. All right. X-Pac living, uh, black man's option.